Smithville Board of Alderman meeting now call to order. Please join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Aye. Alderman Sarver? Aye. Alderman Blumker? Aye. 
Alderman Chevalier? Aye. Alderman Hurlburt? Aye. Five zero. Motion carries. Ms. Wagner, please read the bill. An ordinance authorizing the input to not to exceed $3,625,000 principal amount of general obligation bonds, series 2019 of the City of Smithville, Missouri, and certain other documents and actions by the city. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is number 8, Bill 2829-2020. I move to approve bill number 2829-19 the zoning portion of Archer Acres with A1 AR. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Clerk, please call roll. Alderman Hilbert? Aye. Alderman Chevalier? Aye. Alderman Blumker? Aye. Alderman Sarver? Aye. Alderman Atkins? Aye. 5-0. Motion carries. Ms. Wagner, please read the bill. An ordinance changing the zoning classifications for districts of certain lands located in the city of Smithville, Missouri. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we're going to take a five minute recess so we can get some paperwork taken care of. Good? Okay. That's wrong. Next item on the agenda is number item number nine. Resolution 667. All right. I move that we approve Resolution 667, <coughs> amending the compensation. Thank you. All right. Second that. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving Resolution 667 say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is Resolution 668, item number 10. Uh, in that 
County does state that he met with me and Roger and Kurt Blankenship. I've looked at some of the easement agreements that other than mine, and yes, Mike didn't sign those either. So is Mike representing the city in a fraud and frauding all of us to do this forward? Or what, what was Mike's intention on, on all of this easement agreements? That's the only thing I've ever asked for is what was agreed in this agreement. Nothing more. Everything that was put forward was put forward by you guys to pay for them. Not by me. So that's that's what I'd like to have in writing. If you don't want to borrow those agreements. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Next, Bill Brandon. Phil Wright, 1601 at Highway, Smithville, Missouri. Um, first house with the water tower. Um, the only thing I'd like to say is appreciate the great job that everybody's doing here. But I've been on several boards down here before. And I got referred to that I was on the board. Some information got brought to me over policy. On policy on, and some of you probably aren't aware of the problem, but policy on changing road names, addresses, and so forth. Um, I'd really like to look into that policy. Um, I kind of understand why we're doing it. Don't necessarily have to agree with it. But when we go to change something in this town, we need to include the people that are involved with it. We need to pull people through problems, not push them through. Um, I consider myself a big part of this town. I do a lot for this town. Try to help this town out a lot. I try to help with the schools. Try to help with City Hall. Try to help with the fire department, the ambulance sister. We've got a lot of stuff that I help with in this. Um, I spoke with, with Cynthia. I spoke with Melissa. And I spoke with Jeff on my problem. Um, and, I, and, and I've kind of explained it to them. I don't think you've shared any of that information. But the issue is, I've been 1601 at Highway for um, since 1993. Um, the first letter that I got, and I've got, got it there, I can give you all copies of it, but the first letter I got was we're changing that highway to um, Old, Jefferson. Old, Jefferson. Old, Jefferson. Old Jefferson Road, okay, or Old Jefferson Highway, um, which was the first letter. The next day we get a new letter. Now we've decided that we've made a decision that we're going to change our address also. Um, not only are we going to change it from Old Jefferson Highway, we're going to change it to an 1800 block, um, which we've always been 1601. And the only house on the road, it really doesn't matter. Um, the other roads that we've made in town that were supposed to be aligning, common sense didn't play a factor in that. I'm sorry if you guys are the ones who voted on it, but they didn't play, the common sense didn't play a factor in that. We've got one road that leads from, that's at Highway that changed its name to Litton Way when we got across the dam. It's been that way for years. When that name had to be renamed for the city of Smithville, we should have still named that road really one name. Instead, we've got it 1st Street, Spelman Road, 172nd Street, and now I think it's Smithville High Boulevard or something on the end. That's pretty confusing to give somebody directions on how to get to your house. It's all the same road. I don't care that it goes east and west. Nobody else does it. Um, but I would like to go back and look at the policy. You guys can't fix what you, what's already, in my opinion, is kind of messed up. But maybe we could do this for future. You know, yeah, let's make our city easy to, to maneuver in. Why would we want four names on a stretch of road that's not a mile and a half long? Four names on one road that's, that's a lot of names. A lot of name changing. When you change roads, you turn your turn signal on. You don't have to turn your turn signal on on that road nowhere. Go from drive out that road, never turn your turn signal on, start on first, stall the 172nd, and now Smithville Boulevard. This seems kind of wasted to me, but I don't know anything. But when we do include name changes for all of you, when you're in, um, I know the McCallums, I've seen some of their posts on Facebook and stuff, it would be nice to include all those people. It really would be nice. I mean, it doesn't make anybody happy. Everybody likes to be included. You guys do too. If we go to change something, you like to be included. That's all I got. Uh, yeah, I just step on anybody's toes or, or anything like that. I'm not 
asking you to change it. I kind of really understand it. I really do. I mean, I understand what we're doing. It just doesn't make real good sense. Yep. And when we cut it out, there wasn't a policy. It's already on our future work session agenda, so we can look into that. Uh, but you need to turn your turn signal on from 172nd onto the whole Jefferson Highway, hopefully, because that is a left-hand turn. But that's when the road should change, and it should stay the same name all the way to W Highway, because you never have to turn your turn signal on again. The road that I'm talking about, when you, uh, when you come off of 169 Spur, which I know it's not 169 Spur any longer, that starts out as First Street, and then that turns and goes to Spelman, but you don't have to turn your turn signal on. You just keep on going, then you turn on 172nd, which it's just a curve. They got a curve sign. It's been there for years, long before a lot of you was even here. You know what I mean? It's been there. And then you you, you just continue right on and go right across the dam. It would have been a lot smarter to make it all one road. It's just opinion, and maybe my opinion's wrong, but that's why I got it. Have a great day. Thank you. Any other more general public comment? All right, uh, here quite a bit of downtown. Um, business owners down here. Uh, so, do you guys want me to open public comment first, or do you want to be? Please, All right. Sarah, we'll be over here first. I know you have quite a few documents that will address some of the items directly, but if you want to just give okay. your first three minutes. Hi, my name is Sarah Ewanall. I have Chops Barbecue, the little bit space I store. I live at Torrey um, like Highland Avenue. Uh, thanks for allowing us to come talk. I really just had some questions about the packet that went out, so I kind of just put the page and a question about it. Um, my first question is, uh, while we're doing the packet, it's repeated several times that the ADA compliance on the walkway is five feet. When looking up ADA compliance on ADA.gov or any other ADA website, um, but on ADA.gov chapter four, section 403.5.1 uh, states clear width of walking surface shall be 36 inches minimum. With the exception, the clear width shall be permitted to 32 inches for 24 feet. So it has to be 36 inches. It can go down to 32 inches for two feet, but then it has to go back out to 36 inches as the minimum. Um, as long as there is 60 inches every 200 feet for a turnaround area or a passing. So two wheelchairs or walkers can pass next to each other. Um, roughly where we are at east side of Maine, Roughly each building is 10 feet wide, or 20 feet wide, I'm sorry. So the corners would be our passing lane. But everywhere in the packet says five feet. Is there some clarification on that? So Jack, the five feet is on the Bridge Street section in the packet? Because I know the Main Street section is different. According to our engineers, it was five feet. You know where? I can't find five feet anywhere. I have dug and dug and dug. It's the four feet. Right. Where there has to be a passing zone. Correct. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at that. Okay. I know the Main Street, south the south, south side of Main Street is different because we're measuring from the railing back. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, Jack's back. Right. But it can't be from like the hand railing or the patio railing? The hand railing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that gives you 36 inches currently or 40 inches in the. Oh, no, that gives us like. It was five, six feet. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like five feet to the railing, or to the... I know, I mean, but the, the ADA path on that side is not five feet in the packet. We measure the patios from the railing back, so that in that section it is only like 36 inches. Correct. Correct, Jeff? That's my understanding. Yes. Right, so the ADA yeah. yeah. path on, on, in front of Chops is, is only a 36 or 40 inch path. The rest of it is packet space. So on, I know on, on the package, it says on Bridge Street, the package is five feet. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, every time I get through here, it's five feet everywhere. It's different. Just yeah, yeah, just knowing, I mean, like I said, I'm just looking for it. Yeah, I think if we uh, include some diagrams for the downtown, too, you kind of show. I think we had some in there for the patios, but if we just show the PDA path with the. Uh, 
Patio space that we're talking about. So yeah, so then most of the stuff that um, we had written down and going through the packet, um, page 69, like the signs, uh, you know, signs as long as they're in compliance with ADA, you know, as long as they have that 36 inch um, spacing. Uh, we enjoy the signs out there. We think it notifies people of what's going on. Um, we do have a flag up there. It's in the patio area, but we also put our signage for that. A lot of times we mention uh, what movie night is coming up, what events are going to be in the, in the um, courtyard, um, you know, and long, just notifying, making it look unique, uh, things like that. Um, on page 69, one of your thoughts that you, or your questions we were talking about was should the signs be for just the downtown or for the city, our opinion on it was if we do it for us, we should do it for everybody as long as it's not getting away your ADA uh, Page 71, we were, talking, we were discussing the tables and the uniform of them. We do feel that this board should be able to pick uh, what our, our tables should look like. We want things to look well, we want things to look good. Um, some specs for them. We don't want a hopping table that's eight feet tall in front of you for any reason. But uh, we also would like to purchase our own tables and to be able to have um, some choice about it. I can't go out and buy a $500 table to put out there, but I can do a couple at a time. Um, so if you guys choose, you know, it needs to be black, it needs to be 36 inches, it needs to be this, I can work with that. I can find something that works with our budget um, to be able to pick. But um, I want to be able to have control of those tables. Um, city specs, uh, and also on page 71, we talk about who would be responsible for them. Um, those tables are going to be like our restaurant. I hope that we've shown you over the last two years that we've been here that we want things to run efficiently and effectively, and we expect our area to be clean up. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Dan out there taking care of sidewalks from corner to corner. We sprayed them down trying to get the sand out because the amount of sand that's been brought in into the business, we can pretty much have a, a sand pile at this point. Um, but just keeping that stuff cleaned up, and we would do that for our other place, for the patio section also. Um, we do like the idea of having a permit to being able to buy a permit for the area. Um, it's, it, I, we understand the necessity for that, and that's fine with us. Um, we did have some question about the pricing of it. Listed in here, it was $250, and it's being modeled off the Lee Summit. Um, I just want to remind you that Lee Summit has 97,000 people in it. Smithville has 10, maybe. Are we at 10 yet? We'll find that next year. There you go. <laughs> um, so looking at the permit, that's $250 for the summit, and it is three times the size of us. I just want you to take that into consideration. Ten times, Ten times sorry. Ten times. Um, just taking that into consideration um, when you're talking about permits. 24-inch um, table is what I see listed in here that fits along with the thing. I brought a cutout of a 24-inch table. Um, we put that up against the railing and we're trying to put chairs around it today. We'd like to get three people around it. Our, what we are picturing is a table pushed up against the railing, two people would be facing each other, one would be facing out over the street. Um, we found it very difficult to put three people around that. Two, we could definitely put around there um, for a 24-inch table. We'd like 36, but we understand that there's rules and regulations that we have to follow. We do have a 30 inch table that we have in the restaurant that is obviously in between the two that I could measure wise we think would fit out there just fine staying in compliance and everything. Um, let's see, also staying on that page. Um, oh, I'm um, talking about permanent tables or movable tables. Um, we know on a day to day basis how dirty it gets underneath our tables. Uh, we would really like to be able to move them to clean underneath them. Bad weather's coming in, we want it to get inside. Uh, a barbecue sauce brings ants. I want a patio full of ants. I want to be able to move tables, spray it down, let's get it cleaned up and make sure it looks nice and kept it free of that. Um, also, I'm already paying a staff to clean up. 
I don't know the city needs to pay extra people to come out there and maintain those fields when I'm ready to go ahead and do that and have that already be taken care of for you. Um, I don't have a page number written down from this. Sorry about that. Uh, but there's a mention about sidewalk sales. We love the idea of having sidewalk sales. Let's be able to use these big, beautiful sidewalks as long as we're staying within all of the needs and everything. I think it's a great opportunity. We want the downtown to be walkable for everyone to be down there having stuff set out with limitations, of course, um, brings people down and shows what's going on. Um, we were talking about to the liquor license. We are willing to modify our liquor license to include the patio area if that's something that we can work towards. Um, I know that from the license or from the liquor license he's here to clarify some stuff and he has made it clear to us that um, it is something that we can do. Uh, as long as we do the other things for it. Goodness. Uh, bicycles, not on the sidewalks. We get this, but we'd really like to see some bike racks in there. With the addition of the bike lane, with the trails and everything, we put some bike, uh, bike racks up. We would like that also. Um, ice and snow removal. Uh, we do feel that the city should probably maintain this and continue to keep this on, um, mainly because not all of our business owners can um, get out there to clean up our ice and our snow. This year's been really rough, you know, we all know that. Um, Dan does all the way down to the corner to help get rid of, like, jeans. We don't even get out there every time we do that. We want to make sure that that's done. Most of the business haven't even opened while uh, it's been snowing. So for us that try to open our business hours, no matter what, we have to get out and do that. Um, and even there's been times that the city has to be able to get out there right now and get it. Um, so trying to expect them to be out there and take care of it, which is kind of my thought, that they don't always, they don't always make it. And they're not gonna come in just to shovel.
and put forward a recommendation from the downtown that can come through our algorithm. And, and we can iron out some of these questions that maybe don't have to be made, the decisions aren't so urgent right now that they have to be made on the spot. We, that some of us will do some of the work, some of the research, looking at examples like you guys did with Kansas City and, and uh, West End and all that, and put forward a recommendation in, through our opening and, and uh, see where we can come up with this. Is that? Yeah, and that's, that what, that, that's what this uh, initial discussion is to do, to come up with some of those recommendations. The packet's been out for over a month now. Um, there is some urgency with some of the some of these decisions, especially around liquor licensing, uh, things like that. The, the shorter term of the table size and things like that, we can, we can talk about for a while, but we did put the pack out over a month ago. So we haven't had a chance to meet about it though, because things were Because we weather. Right. And that's and this, isn't, this, isn't the only, this isn't the only meeting we're having. This is just to kind of get some initial thoughts out there and talk through the packet because we didn't get a chance to hear in the work session. Right. And if I may, yeah. Staff had started thinking around holidays we know in the springtime this is going to open and we have some issues we need to start looking at and that's why we scheduled a meeting in January to begin those discussions. And then what staff put together really is kind of that, okay, there are some things that we need to think about in whatever format yeah. that occurs. These are things, the questions that need to be addressed at some, at some point. And there are existing ordinances that have not been enforced for quite some time that we need to determine, do those need to change, do they need to be enforced? So, you know, we're looking for discussion and really that, that So, for this time, or this setting, it doesn't feel very discussion. I can't just talk to John, hey John, or, you know, that's not discussion, really. That's come up with your presentation, like Sarah did, make the case, and then see if you guys agree with it or not. So, it's not very discussion. -worthy. Originally, this meeting was scheduled as a work session, like I said, weather canceled it. So, it's going to pump this till March or April. Or start the discussion tonight when we have a regular scheduled board meeting. So my question is, would you guys mind asking for a committee meeting put together that we can have, ask our all of them to attend and join it at the at the chops or wherever and and go over these over a meeting or two and then come back with a recommendation, I guess. Because there's a lot of stuff in here from the economic and entertainment district model that Kansas City uses for alcohol to the tables and sizes that we can put out there, you know. All those things can be worked through with a neat community group of people putting their experiences and expertise into the, the problem or the, the process to uh, see what we've come up with. So I, I don't know if any of us are overly opposed to that, but I think part of this tonight is what are we missing? Because we know that you know staff can come up with all the suggestions in the world. We can go visit, you know, the we saw it yesterday, really talking to those businesses and those folks and right. you know, look at how do they handle the snow on the rents and all those things. And I've got great pictures. But right. you know, part of tonight is what are your concerns to make sure that we've got that and we start having a proper dialogue and discussion. You know, that's what we're charged to do is to go do that with, with our constituents. So what concerns do you have so we can make sure to go properly? And that's exactly what I'm hoping to flush out. But it's hard to do that in a three minute or even if I, you know, standing here and doing this. But well, we've run well past three minutes. I know you have. Clearly, well, thank you for that. You are done. We are worried about this section at all. But it, we want to make sure we get it right. Anyway, it's, it, it's lacking some of that back and forth. And hey, okay, after one meeting, you you agreed to go research this. You're going to go look at that example. You were going to talk to this, you know, Weston or whatever it was, and then come back with a with a community driven. Uh, recommendation for all of these bullet points you guys have on the agenda that whether you agree with them or not then at least you have that the citizen input in addition to staff input and, and your ideas that's all you know otherwise I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't share some of the businesses that reached out to me and I sat down and spent uh, over an hour one of them kind of walking through and talking through and hearing their concerns and their ideas to make sure we were able to get that included I think all of us are available and happy to do so. And I, and I don't know if you walked in after we mentioned this, but we all met today with our companies that are going to do this citizen based strategic plan. We are moving in that direction. This is an initial discussion. We're not going to make so a decision. Decisions. Decisions. Yeah. Okay. No, there's no, there's no ordinances, there's no sample ordinances, there's no resolutions on this agenda. This is a discussion on downtown. This was initially intended as a work session item. So 
So for that discussion and for staff to start getting a feel of other questions that the board has, maybe general direction that they have. I've taken some notes based on Sarah's comments and, and as we hear from the board, some directions to bring them some so, more information. So maybe I guess my part of the, this part of the discussion is let's see if we convene a, an interest group, whether it's downtown businesses and combination staff and, and elected officials in our club. And I can tell you means. and I can tell you for recent events as well, myself, all of the other on here all attended or tried to attend area history district meetings that have either not happened or had limited attendance where we were seeking feedback on this as well. Because this has been moved multiple times now. So we haven't it we haven't started this discussion. We can't keep moving it. I don't think Dan can wait until next spring to have a decision. I'm suggesting that you put a a time limit on it. Okay, here's you could, this committee has till March seventeenth or whatever that date is to bring us a recommendation. That's good. Um, Something along those lines. That's, yep, that's all. Thank you, guys. Let us get through A, B, and C real quick, which is 
sidewalks off on all the bicycles, and then when we get the open signs, we'll remember to come back here. Yeah. Does that work? All right, so first thing uh, on the list is number uh, letter A, sidewalk uses and standards. Uh, also, I'll send it to the board to. Well, I think we've also tried to outline within the report kind of questions that staff has identified that are out there as kind of to help shape that discussion. Um, I'll broadly just line out, you know, part, first we had to do this because our infrastructure was crumbling and we had to redo the pipes and everything else and if we're going to do it then we've got to do the streets too and if we're going to do that let's do the sidewalk. You know, by the way, if we're going to do it, let's do it right and it's really nice. So we, we made it nice and we did all those things that we could use this and so I want to make sure that we do everything we can to make sure that our businesses and, and the community can use that space for the things that we put the money into to do so. So, you know, the ability to do sidewalk cafes is important. I know D is a, the alcohol regulation is an important part of that. And I think we've got some more information we still need to get to figure out how to do that and do that correctly. Um, but uh, thank you for attending tonight. Uh, glad to see you. And so I think we need to make sure to do so. You know, I, I like the idea of permitting so that it's very clear who's, who can use that space so someone can't just go plop down and uh, hang something there. I think we need to make sure our permits are are reasonable for what folks are going to do. Um, you know, I know sidewalk sales might be a different type of permit, you know, more of a special use permit thing so that folks can, we can be make sure that we're in compliance with the things that need to be there versus things that are a little bit more fixed, like tables. Um, you know, from the table discussion, you know, I sat down and had dinner out there with one on each side and uh, someone on the end and two of the adults weren't the smallest gentlemen in the world. Um, so I think there's a way to make that happen and still have plenty of ADA space. So I think we need to figure out exactly what, uh, forgive me Dan, what size was that table? So I think I think we're right it's between 30 and 36 because the current tables are 30. They're 36. The current table is at 36. The current table is at 36. Yeah. But I was kind of pushed to 36 and get way, way far away from this being the maximum. Gotcha. So, so, and the other thing I heard was they want the tables to be movable, which I agree with for cleaning and maintenance and all those things. As long as they weigh enough that they're not going to up or when we get, we get a lot of weight through downtown too, and that's the only thing I can remember. So. And so I, I, I do like the idea of maybe convening a small group and lining out, hey, here's the style and here's the broad, you know, what it looks like so that there's some uniformity to it that folks can choose from and then they can go buy off of that. So what you're recommending is pull together a committee to establish a catalog for amenities? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not talking about a lot of businesses who could actually make use of that space. Right? Yeah, we, we don't know what we're going to right? Sure, but getting the input from the folks who plan to use it and are in that area, I think is, is worthwhile. And so we could have a small group sit down and look at that and bring that back for maybe another work session before we finalize. Do you volunteer to leave that small group? Just not moved. <laughs> All in order. I, I'm happy to join the group. Um, as Part of that one of the for that district and they're all going to be here tonight, so I'm happy to join too. Anything else on sidewalks and standards, uses and standards? Right. Do we have any general comment from the board with regards to the responsibility for clearance of the ADA cap or the sidewalks in general? You know, um, one of the things that always impressed me with Dan since the first time I saw him cleaning sidewalks from corner to corner is that it was awful there. He took a lot of pride with that. But uh, that, that was just leaves and debris that day. Yeah, on the only on the only yeah, on the entire winter season. Yeah. In those in those cars. Um, I think I think one of the things we might want to look at too is making sure that we have a solid street sweep street sweeping, street sweeping schedule for the downtown area. Um, I know we talked about quarterly for the entire city, 
but downtown may need it more. And if we can make sure that we business owners know that schedule and we get you know debris to the curb before then. Um, we have some big trees out there that drop in, we've got sand, we've got all kinds of things. So as long as we can uh, do that, I think that should come up as well in your guys' discussion. But um, if we do need the city staff to take care of it, we need to come up with a cost around that. Well, I think one other option is staff has had discussions also as we move forward in the Main Street program to review there. If we can establish a district downtown, perhaps, that, that might provide, you know, I think there are lots of options in looking at how we can look at that as well. And, and, and while, we have, while we have some of the downtown businesses here and some other business owners, uh, the Main Street webinar will be here on the 27th. 27th. Uh, Seven, is it three? No, uh, ten. Ten, ten a.m. And if you cannot make it at that time, we, it will be recorded as well, so we can send that to you on email. So make sure you get that info to you if you can, if you want to see that webinar or participate. We'll, we'll stream it here. So thank you for reminding me on the So along that lines, I'll just throw it out since we're in kind of discussion. I would really like to see that downtown improvement district or whatever you want to call it come together and with that you know maybe that helps fund the cleaner um i heard someone mention today they really like the old guy with the room kind of going through like the good old days um, you know that's cute but you know what's that look like what we do i think Steve, i wasn't going to put it on the well i think that you would have saved that same and saw you could have saw the back of if you heard yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but the other aspect of too, that is, you know, we've made improvements, helping our businesses to make improvements to their, their facade, and so maybe having a facade improvement grant that can go out and... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there are lots of options within the Missouri Main Street program that I, I think that's really good information to start with. Um, and a lot of um, business improvement districts really, um, you know, kind of self-sustaining boards the, the the city is a resource to as opposed to um, running it, um, and resource in terms of support as opposed to Okay, anything else on sidewalks? You said we have somebody here from alcohol funds. Okay. So we move on to the alcohol regulations. I know uh, all the Walker you mentioned this before. Um, what do we find out, Chief? I know you looked at this course as well. <coughs> Understanding, and you know, he'll correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you can't have that designated in your permitted area of the state. I believe it has to be has to have a what kind of barrier? Just a defendant boundary. Fencing. Yeah. I mean, it can be just like a temporary fencing. It can be permanent fencing, whatever. But it has to be some kind of a, a just a defendant boundary. So, so, so with that block, the ADA path that we currently have. If you look at the patios that are out there in front of like Chops Park, you they have the metal. Uh, rail around the patio doesn't completely block off the sidewalk from other people passing. Would we, are you saying we have to completely block, block that end? I believe so. I believe from the front of the building out to where your ADA compliance zone is would probably need to be, the area where you would be seen and serving alcohol would need to be enclosed in some fashion with okay. some kind of physical barrier. Okay. I don't believe there's any regulations on height or width or color or anything like that. But it basically has to be some kind of definitive physical barrier, a simple line on the pavement or painted line or a differentiation between brick and concrete. I don't think we'll meet that. Yeah, that would be physical, just, just yeah. a line on the pavement. Uh, the state supervisor will not approve that. So it would have to be some kind of a temporary fencing, temporary a rope. I mean, you know, a lot of times the cities, uh, their codes, you know, determine what it has to look like, uh, you know, if it, but it would have to be something physical. Okay. And again, that can be temporary. Then that'd be perfect. And does that have to be only around the areas where the alcohol is like, served on the tables, or do it have to cover the area from the, the door of the restaurant out to the tables as well? No, it, it's just going to have to be where the alcohol is going to be served. Okay. So I think in, in order to, am I, am I putting words in your mouth? So we've got the sidewalk area in between where the alcohol would be served and consumed, but it would come, so there would be people passing from the building to the consumption area. Is that 
Okay. Okay. And, 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 and how many how many dimensions are we talking? About? Thirty inches. Thirty inches. <laughs> well, thirty inches. It wouldn't be a problem. I mean, that's. I just wanted to confirm that that was yes. Yeah, so. yeah the, the, the ADA yeah. path is a touches the building. The patio is thirty six inches okay. from the building. Right. So they would have to cross that sidewalk to get to the patio. That would not be a problem for us to license that. Okay. So, so people could walk down the sidewalk. Yeah. Walk down the sidewalk. Yes, and, and just to be clear on this, whatever this is going to be a this is going to be a permanent fix to their license. We're going to add that. You know, uh, when we license a place, we'll, you know, it'll be something as simple as all of the building at 123 Main Street. When we add this to the legal description of their request, and then there's a little paperwork that they're going to have to fill out, but it's going to say all of the building at 123 Main Street to include an east side uh, sidewalk patio. Okay, and then the, and then the businesses and their employees will be responsible for. I mean, that that's part of their business. So they're going to be responsible for policing that to make sure no one uh, enters that area that's not supposed to be in there, no one exits that area with alcohol. And so, I mean, it, it's, it has to be self-policed by the business owner themselves or the licensing. So, so it sounds like there's not really anything we have to do for our ordinances. It's really going to rely on the business owner and licensing to make sure that they have that, what they need. There may be something on the city if you want to determine what that barrier looks like okay, yeah. or, or what minimum standards for it. Right. But as far as the policing of it, right. you know, we can handle it like anywhere else. We no differently than if somebody, one of Dan and Sarah's patrons walked out the front door without them knowing me. Right. Same difference. Same difference. Yeah. It's, that section is going to be considered it's an part, extension part of the interior of the business. Yeah. Yeah. It's an extension of the rest of their business. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm, now I'm scared. Yeah. Now you're going to listen. Whatever's there, what? I guess I'm, I'm a little confused here. Right? We're talking about a barrier, but we're talking about letting folks sell alcohol outside that shop in that side, or serve alcohol in that shop outside the shop in that scene here, right? That's what we're talking about. Yeah. If we did that physical barrier, I just want to see how that would be possible. They would have to put a pet scene that you would have to determine what that would look like. I, I, yes. Why would we put fencing on unless it's, unless it's a special event, maybe, but a normal day of the operation? Yeah. So, so can they buy the alcohol inside the shop and then come outside and sit? Or is it completely no, 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 no deal without that there? That's open for labor. That's the same thing as if they walk out of job with the beer today and you're walking down the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Is that something we regulate? Yes. Yeah, so, we so we can try to, we can say that they can sit out there and drink, or can we? One thing that would have to be addressed, if, if that's allowed either that way or we define an area and fence it, is, is we'll go out to um, modify our drinking in public ordinance because it does prohibit mm -hmm. drinking in public spaces. So whether it's a, we define this barrier and allow that and it's served there, or whether we go around, I think Alderman Chevalier is going where the, the tables are there, the server don't take it, but if we allow somebody to take it out as long as the space okay with that. We still have to have to yeah. modify our car when it deals with alcohol in public to determine those areas and define how that's. And it's still going to be the responsibility of the licensees or their employees to make sure that the alcohol that's leaving the building is going into their defined space and not elsewhere. If it if leaves the compounds of, of the confines of that area, then they're in violation of the law. Okay? Unless it's a sealed container, you know, no open drinks. I mean, this, does, this doesn't, it's not a free-for-all to allow pay outside of anywhere they want to go. You know, they have, they have to leave the business and then, they're, again, they're responsible, they're, they're licensees are responsible for making sure it's going into their defined area and, and not the police. So either way, it's not that we need to have, we have to look at the barrier, we have to look at how much space we have in those county kind of areas and if there's even space to put in the barrier, it's a lot of So we not be. It's a discussion. I mean, I, I, oh, I don't see how it varies. But I see how having a change in the open container um, is an option. Yeah. License in a public sidewalk is not an option with us. I mean, without the barrier. It's just, just not an option. So this, the business could get a license, but the city could change their coordinates to allow for open containers on We're square. talking about taking it out of the business. Yeah. Yes, I believe so. Okay, because exactly. I don't, state doesn't does regulate it? open containers or not. Well, but there, there is, no, there is a, yes. So there is an administrative law against, you know, it, our law, our administrative law, our 
it prohibits the bison being allowed anyone to take an open drink off the premise. Okay. Yes. For the state, right? The state. The state. That's a violation of state laws. I thought Missouri is an open container state. That's a separate issue. When we're talking about administrative law with the liquor laws. With the license. With the liquor license. With the license. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I represent. I don't write any of that. I'm talking about just liquor licenses. So, so, in layman's terms to, to me, they're not selling packaged liquor, they're selling open beer. They're selling open liquor. Right. If I go to Tipsy's to buy a beer and I'm open it, they're not, Tipsy's isn't a violation, but if I take one of Dan's beers out of the sidewalk, they're in violation. Absolutely. And the difference is that's a package business. Tipsy's can't allow you to open that in there. Right. If they do, they're in violation. Um, what happens out in the parking lot, that's not on their legal description. The difference is, is you have a buy the drink place who is now licensing that area outside, i.e. the sidewalk patio. So now they're taking that is going to be the responsibility of the licensing to police that area. Right. Because they're not a package liquor business. They right. They can't just sell your beer to go. They're a buy the drink. What I'm saying is, yes, it would be. It would be to the fact that it, it's not if it's licensed with us. But what I'm saying is we will not license that sidewalk patio if there's not a definitive barrier. And they're not selling packages over there selling by the drink liquor, by the drink liquor. Does that, does that make sense? Are, I mean, the, the way it stands right now, Tops, if I were to go up there tonight and I was to order a beer and open it and walk outside on the sidewalk. I tackle it. That would be a violation of the state law. But but if they if they're licensing that sidewalk patio, which is a definitive area, then they're walking license premise to license premise. It's all on the same legal description. It's all on the same license premise. But you said no barrier. So they have to have barriers. So when you said barrier, does that have to go from the actual building all the way out to the street? It, or just as long as the ADA sidewalks are clear? That's correct. So it could just be a, a short railing, the long railing? It, it, could, it, it could be something very, very simple, yes. Yeah. Could be a chain. <laughs> something as simple as a plastic chain, yes. Could be a chain. Yeah, something that simple. No, no, no. Rail to rail. 14 foot. Right. So, how has it been in Kansas City created the, the economic and entertainment districts that don't require any barriers, but they're residents? Yeah. 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 Y
Okay, so, so, so if, they cross from, if they cross the ADA space from the sidewalk into a chain area, right. that is okay? Yes, we would allow that because we'd, uh, we'd have we'd to be from the ADA in the front. I tried to draw one here, but. Bikes riding on the sidewalks, we don't know about. Sure. We 
throughout sure. there. So having said that, I think you know one of the things that was brought up was about five jacks. I think part of the idea of the public art, um, like Lee Summit, part of their public art is nice little black bike racks that are public art on the corners. So yeah. they come onto the sidewalk, they get parked and locked up, and then they go into business. But I don't. Riding that one, right. I love that. Right. And also the thing I don't want to see, which I took a picture of just at, when I rode my bike last time we were business, is I don't want to see them all chained to the new railings. Um, it'll ruin the lifespan of this as well. Um, we have industrial arts at the schools. We might want to reach out to them and see if they want to look into some bike grass for us. Well, and I know also, and just anecdotally, yeah, um, you know, whether the Main Street program, that'd be something a downtown group takes a look at. But uh, my work in the city of Florence, there are a number of tremendously bicycle friendly community, a number of bike racks throughout town, a number of them have been donated, and um, the downtown Central Business District Rotary Club has made that kind of a pet project of theirs that they work, they have a special design that's um, uh, fabricated metal that shows Ride Lawrence, and, and they have a number of bike racks throughout town. So it might also be worth reaching out to some of the... I think we have a Rotarian. I think that I wasn't trying to look too hard, but you know, we should have two of them. We have the Lions Club, that's going to be Rotary. Not yet, I've got to get there, I've got to get there. But Lions, Rotary, Columbus, those type of projects would, would make sense as well as an opportunity. Yeah, I think our, 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 the founder of our local Rotary makes metal products. Also. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Yeah. Okay. So we all agree ordinance is good. No riding bikes on sidewalks. We'll have shares, we'll have trails. Uh, I know in the initial design of the streetscape we had some bike racks behind the stage as well. Is that kind of area as well? I think on one of Aaron's drawings. Um, that's a good central location. That'd be a good well. central location, yeah. So yeah. and then some other spots too that we might want to look at. I know behind my Tracy's up here tonight. I know behind her business there's some space. So then it's the parking areas downtown. Yeah. yeah. Mid block crossings, things like that. And even back there, I talked to Craig about behind his building, so it's part of the space. Mm -hmm. All right. And then maybe City Hall, I'll throw it back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, open signs, change order. Did we get a picture of those? When did you get it? I emailed it to you as well. I know that's the jet. You all need to print it. I was just going to say, you're going to be able to Or a separate committee to figure out where we 
attached to those. The one other thing that I wanted to add was our side of the street is not thought out. I mean, I think we've learned this. I mean, one snow or ice, that thing's going to be under under ice for days. I mean, I still got to pull ice. Yeah, I think on that side, we've got to look at does it attach to the railing somehow? Yeah. How, how do we do that? So I think as we sit down and kind of talk through, there are a couple of options to get that figured out. All right, options. Oh, that's an option. That's not the That's where people I talk to. I don't know if I can walk so far. I don't want anything to do it. So just go to the floor. So for the to move this forward. If you guys can get back to us, we have a board meeting on, we have a work session the 19th, correct? Correct. If you guys can get, recommend, get information back to staff by March 8th, that gives them, that gives them a week to get it compiled into the, the packet for us to all review it. And then our work session would be at 5.30 on March 12th. To discuss this on Girl Scouts. No, March 19th. Sorry. Oh, March 12th, March 19th. Yeah, sorry. March 19th at 5 30. March 12th, Girl Scout Day. Sorry, I was off. Do we have anything else on the agenda for that March session? For March 19th, March 12th, Girl Scout Day? Yeah. Um, that's when we begin by 12th session. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that, that would be part of the discussion of the entire downtown business district. Yes? If we, I'm sorry, to start talking about the 60 inch and 36 inch. If 60 inch is required, there's down by Platte Valley Bank and the lawyer's office and all those, those are nowhere near 60 inch sidewalks. So, it, I think. The doors aren't 60 inches. Yeah, I mean. So, the ADA is probably 36 with, with, with 60 inch. <laughs> And we'll work with our engineer to get some additional information on how that came up. Uh, all right, again. Yeah. No, so there's a building path yeah. and it's public sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the difference. So we'll, we'll make sure that that information, in addition to the ordinances, and Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we're building our sidewalks to, to five feet, right, Jenna? Yeah, we are. Okay. You are the development director, you know where sidewalks are being built to. So. Yeah. Right. Wildfire, we got five feet all the way down. Yeah. Then you sign up, so. Okay. Anything else? All right. Moving on to number 13, new business for the floor. Anything? Mr. Mayor, now you mentioned it, but just to ensure that uh, the road naming uh, and numbering policy is on a future agenda, yeah. and we, we do let uh, we will let Mr. Wright know is that is scheduled at this point in time. It is on the planning calendar, is unscheduled at this point. So that's something that staff, as we, we work through things, are. Yeah, and I would like that discussion to be closer to when we're discussing the transportation master plan. Because as those roads do not have a turn signal turn today, the future plan on all of those intersections, 180th Street, Eagle Parkway, and Old Jefferson Highway, are all planned to have roundabouts or some sort of turn that would require traffic signaling. So as of today, they do not, but future plans for the transportation master plan proposal, they all do. So I want that discussion to be combined with the transportation okay. master plan discussion. Okay. And then it, it was mentioned in Cynthia's report, but just to put it on a future agenda for the folks, since we have folks engaged and listening tonight, um, we will be signing a, an agreement on a system-based strategic plan that will be very comprehensive. We need folks to be engaged. so. Uh, stay tuned for that, and it will be a very comprehensive, very engaging discussion that we will have on the future of the city and how to go line those things out. I think it's uh, very different from what folks have seen in the past, and uh, extremely excited about what what we saw and where we're headed. So stay tuned for that. And tentative timeline on that was we were starting next month, possibly. The, their initial, if you'll recall, their February. proposal included February. We won't have a contract until March, so I think that will shift everything. My thought would be probably discussions with them um, and establish a process that would begin, I'm thinking, probably late March. With, with we'll them, know more after we've got With them providing deliverables by the end of the year. With them providing deliverables by the end of the year. Yeah, they had their timeline finishing up by October, so I think that pushes us to still within 2019, though. And that's them meeting with the schools, meeting with the community, meeting with civic groups. They'll be in the city multiple times. They, yes. Take, and then and multiple the groups, multiple levels, uh, multiple formats of, of information, and yes. So. And <clears throat> lastly, um, I, I think we're going to see if we can convene this group on uh, March 5th at 5 p.m. And so see if that works for folks, and we'll kind of reach out, and I'll coordinate with a number of you to to see if that works. So that's before the alderman meeting that evening, so we can kind of meet the data, kind of go through that. Alderman, that's going to be March fourth. That's right. Yeah, March fourth because March fifth is March fifth is the fourth. How about March fourth? Fifth is the meeting of the school. And are you thinking you in this room? Yes. Do you want to use this room, or do you want to use? Space. So you have a, we do chapter event space. So that we have we just volunteered to say, are you okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Monday. Pardon? It's a lot easier to get there. Well, this one's bigger. We have a lot of wall space, too, so we can put up some ideas on the wall. And also walk out and take a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, yeah, of course. Is this going to be the Yes. Cool. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to cut it now for the That is a Monday. That is a Monday. Uh, we said standard standard menu available for dinner. But so, what so we do have a work session scheduled for tomorrow.
Pardon? We have a 530 work session scheduled for that day, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. What do we have on that work session? Uh, city standards regarding utility work repairs and discussion of special road district. Both of those items could potentially be moved back. We're going to try to do the smoking thing too, right? Uh, we have not identified when. Can we move those items? So can we move those items to next week's work session or do you need more time? Uh, we need more time. Okay. So let's just use the fourth then uh, the 530 meeting for this discussion. Downtown. And let's move. Uh, road district and other things later. Okay. And then on the fifth, there's a community meeting at the school. Mm -hmm. So if we look at having another meeting on the seventh grade, a breakout meeting with that, we can do that as well. But you said the twelfth was planning. You said that the fourth was light for the regular session. No, oh. the nineteenth was light for the regular session. No, we actually have um, a number of items. Second reading um, for the oh, um, that we actually have utility rate ordinance. Second reading for the Archer Acres, the award of bid for um, the strategic planning process. Um, we actually there may be some things that we can push from the regular agenda that we've kind of out outlined things that typically happen at that time that might be able to be pushed as well. So. Um, We can try to work it. What are your all's requirements? I know we're also moving to back to 21 and, and discussion of smoking in city parks. Hadn't identified a date there. Um, I mean, ideally, I'd like that, that tobacco discussion to be kind of coinciding with you know, opening up downtown and all that stuff. Uh, kind of have a period kick in all at once, maybe. Yeah. So on the Do you have anything on the calendar for the 14th? For the 14th of? Of March. If we need to schedule another meeting. Let's, let's talk later and see what yes. we can figure out. Yeah. Okay. I'm until Thursday. I'll be back that night. Oh, okay. oh yeah, March 14th. I'll be back that night. Oh, that's, okay. that's so you have a lot on the calendar for now. But if it's a meeting, it's just downtown. Oh, yeah. If, if, if we don't have anything. If it's not a regular meeting. Yeah. Yeah, we might have some staff and just create a year follow up. So, in the meantime, if you, if you have things you want to make sure to add that, to that agenda or concerns, please reach out to me and I'll coordinate with Josh. We'll get something put out and make sure we have something okay. to kind of help drive the discussion. Okay. No further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'm going to adjourn. Holder. Second. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carried. Stand adjourned.